after uh, contemplating and thinking about our game um, this past weekend against Wake Forest, I just uh, I've come to realize how much I like this team. Um, they they've uh, embraced so many new things and have tried so hard, um, and really uh, are working hard to success. And what I've seen is is kind of three stages of this season to this point. Um, the first two stages, first two games, I'd I'll put in one stage, which is just really the discovery. And you'd think that um, spring ball and, and summer and, um, and fall camp would be enough, but it clearly wasn't. And so the first two games are really discovery as to where this team really is, where, we, where are we starting from, and, and where really do we launch from. The next five games I, I saw really and I've seen really as growth and progress in many different areas. And so we'd play a game and there'd be an area that'd show up that we were pretty strong in, another one that need, we needed to work on. And so we'll hit that and target it and improve. And that, that cycle, I think, manifests itself through about the next five weeks where we continue to get better and address different things at different times, looking for a collective um, football game. And then the next, uh, the next, or the last two games, I think what's happened is, is we've earned pressure meaning that um, we've, we've played comprehensive and collective football well enough to have the game be determined at the end. And that's a whole different stage. Um, that's not a stage that's accidental, nor is it a stage that's happenstance. Um, that stage has been earned and, and worked toward. And now, uh, really, the next phase of development is to, to have consistency of remaining in that pressure-filled um, format, but then also execute and manage uh, the game in a, in a way that's appropriate for this team to give them their best chance for success. And uh, it's fun to, to show up at work every day uh, and see resilient players, resilient people that really like each other. And we like them and they like us. Um, and uh, I'm encouraged and, and um, gratified by the experience that I've had so far. There's nothing easy about it. Um, nor did I come for anything to be easy. Uh, we want significant change. And um, each phase and each game is rewarding in its own right. And I look forward to the next test that comes up. And so I'll take questions. One thing that we didn't ask you about Saturday, and it wasn't that major in the whole game, was going for two after the first touchdown. Yeah, going for two. Um, and uh, so there's, I'll frame this the best way that I can. Um, there's quite a bit of latitude given um, when we go for two based on how the opponent is aligned. And if they're scrambling and if they're uncertain and if there's chaos, um, then the simple instruction is, is to run uh, our two-point play. And so we see if they're aligned correctly, if it looks like their assignment sound, if they have the appropriate leverage. And if they do, then... Um, we'll kick the football. If not, then we'll um, run our play. The framework, though, is if the play's run, it's expected to work, um, meaning that if there's any hesitation that the play might not work, then don't run it. And, and so I'll continue to, to set expectations uh, even more clearly. Um, so scrambling and being uncertain, that doesn't necessarily override. Um, there has to, that has to be measured against the, uh, the belief that the play uh, will work if we run it. And if it's anything less than that, um, that's kind of the expectation and criteria that um, you default to. And so I'm never happy when we take points off the board, which uh, not meaning an extra point is guaranteed, um, but it's more more likely um, than a two-point play unless all criteria are met. Hopefully that answers your question. So all the criteria weren't met? They weren't. Mm -mm. It's uh, customary after a game to look at the defensive stats and see Micah Kaiser and Quinn Blanding up there. It's not as common to see Matt Terrell's name up there. He had 10 tackles. I think that's by far the most he's played in a game. What, what has he kind of done to earn the coaching staff's trust, and, and where is he in his development? Yeah, he's earning that over time in practice. He he's, um, was a few weeks off of really kind of Landon Word's um, opportunity, and which came through um, – Zach Bradshaw being hurt, and that's really how Jordan Mack got on the field. Um, you didn't hear much about Matt early because of a, a, a suspension that had happened in the offseason. If I remember right, it was either two or three games. But methodically and consistently, 
uh, Matt just has been working at practice. And, and what Matt provides is a physical edge to our defense. I'm not talking about mentality. While he does that as well, I'm talking about the edges set physically. And it became really clear after maybe the third series um, that Wake Forest was going to be very conservative on third downs, would rather hold on to the ball um, and, and run um, and, and pass efficient, efficiently if they could. Uh, but um, hopefully their defense would force our offense to make some mistakes. And, and so when that happened, Matt's style of play and what he'd done in practice seemed to fit well. And, and he did a, a nice job for the volume of plays that he had. Still lots to learn and lots to improve on, but he showed capability. Um, and he showed capability next to Eli Handback. Um, those two in concert uh, ended up doing a really nice job um, consistently for the day as the running backs really had, and the running game for Wake had very little success. Um, the one quarterback scramble was, was really the, the play. Jackson was just in here and was, had a pretty interesting evaluation of Kirk going forward and how these next three games are big for not only him, but for this program and, yeah. and making this next step. Obviously, no bowl to play for, but what do you want to see from him? Is it simple of getting some confidence back? What, what things have been lost with him? What things do you want to see gained back? Yeah, uh, I would like to see, uh, and before I address Kirk, Kurt specifically, um, just our team continue to grow. And again, my assessment, and I, I think I'm our, our own hardest critic, harshest critic, um, we've, we've earned the chance to be in pressure-filled, um, game-ending type of drives and scenarios the last two weeks. Um, that, that phase is um, a preliminary to the next phase of executing and playing at a really high level in those uh, contests. And so we, we absolutely need to continue to work and prepare in a manner to get back to those situations as frequently as possible. And that's where a lot of this next step, of, next phase of growth is going to happen for not only our team, but for, for Kurt. And I, I think that this will, our best chance to get back to that will come as poise and confidence are just reinstilled with um, the simple evaluation that the protection will hold, stay in, deliver the ball um, quickly and accurately. Um, and again, from the, from the pit experience and that stretch to then a strong performance, I thought, against Louisville and a strong finish, uh, just a little bit too eager and a little bit too antsy um, when pressure comes to, to leave the pocket and, and um, think about extending a play rather than just running the play. And, and there are times where receivers are open and routes are coming open, uh, but uh, the, the pressure or illusion of pressure is just having him not quite as confident or comfortable. Mm -hmm. They're just clearly defining, and this is really the next phase, and I would say collectively as a coaching staff, and I've thought a lot about this for the upcoming phase of where this team currently is. and. And that really comes down to game management, meaning that um, Coach Beck, one of his primary jobs that I see now is not only coaching uh, the play that's going to be run, but the context of the game in which it's being run. So just simple reminders of uh, we're up by three. A punt is not a bad thing here. Um, um, it's this play and, and a simple idea of the progression of you know four yards is fine here. We don't need 12. And so just putting the plays now in context of I think will lessen this idea that everything has to be done uh, with a route conversion and a giant throw and a play being extended. Um, there are methodical and really good things that we have. And if you look at the first drive specifically, that those things um, are possible, he is capable of. And sometimes the context of the game is overriding the play being called rather than just the reminder of, we don't need it all right now. And so I think that we can, as a coaching staff, do a better job, a more clear and thorough job of coaching and framing expectations that way. Um, and I think that'll help Kurt a lot because he doesn't have to do it all by himself and he doesn't have to do it all on every play. And that, to me, reflects communication and leadership from us. Bronco, uh, before the season, you talked about the difference, there being a huge difference between losing close games yes. and winning close games. And you bring up the three phases, now in the pressure phase. Um, obviously, this team has been in close games and has lost close games. But does it take this kind of a phase, a pressure phase, to get over that? And sure. is there something measured that you're seeing from the team that indicates they're closer to that point? Um, yes. So it, it's a giant jump to go from 
the, the, the phase that just, um, it, it's not an official title, but just from what I sense right now of earning the chance to be in the pressure-filled games um, that come down to the last drive. And one was against a current team that um, I think most people have as a very good team in the country, and others against a team that just qualified for their first bowl game for a while. And we're capable regardless of who we play. That's to me what the last two weeks have said, and it would be hard to argue against that. Um, however, the ability to um, confidently and focused, um, laser-like fo having laser-like focus in those situations to put the play in context is something that we're still learning to do. And um, from what I understand, there were a number of those opportunities last year. Um, uh, the points of reference easy for habits to go to existing points of reference. And so we're looking to, to have new points of reference and, and have breakthroughs whenever possible. The best way to do that is by how, how we prepare. And I think there has been stage by stage and incremental by incremental improvements. Um, the outside world will look only at wins. My job is to acknowledge we're at the very beginning of what I think is going to be a great program. And I see things pretty clearly on where we're developing to. And we need some, uh, to establish some new points of reference so they can be habitual in moving forward. And there's, the only way that happens is if we continue to focus um, with even more diligence and determination. Um, if there's any thought now of easing off or stepping off or looking ahead or looking, be none of that is relevant right now if the intent is to continue to improve, which um, it is for me and, and from what I saw from our team, I think it is from them. Bronco, you've been, you actually just mentioned that this is, <clears throat> excuse me, like the first step of building a program. For seniors, that can be kind of an odd spot because mm. there is no next year. This is it for them. How have the seniors on this team kind of embraced that and being a part of the foundation, I guess? Man, just by how they've worked and how they'll continue to work. I, 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 had, I have multiple goals for this program, and the easy focus is on what's the outcome on the field. And how frequent, and how soon we'll win, and how soon we'll be in postseason, and how soon um, we'll be able to expect that consistently. At the same time, um, I want them to have an amazing experience, an amazing life experience, an amazing football experience, amazing relationships, and um, I'm very gratified in regards to that, and I think they are as well. I had a number of players that was. It was it w caught me off guard that were coming up to me after the game saying they had let they had let me down like like that um, not having a winning season or not playing postseason was something that that um, I, I don't know that they they wanted to do not only for themselves but for for the new coaches and myself um, I feel just the opposite I I would love them to have a great experience and um, yeah it, it's it's complete. If you can have an, an amazing friendship um, with your teammates, uh, an amazing relationship with a position coach and a head coach, feel the program growing, developing, and get wins. Um, and we have a, a great opportunity this week against a really good opponent coming in here. And I want each day and each game to be an amazing experience. And hopefully, um, sooner rather than later, the outcome will be uh, the next phase added on to that. Um, and I think the seniors are recognizing this is the front end, and I think they feel there's some amazing things that will happen here. I think they feel fortunate to be part of it, and I just keep telling them I'm lucky that they're here, and I, I couldn't have asked and can't ask more from what they're currently doing. Um, and I think that will remain the case for the next uh, um, number of weeks we have. Coach. Yeah. I think it's 39 straight games now with a turnover. I know only nine of those are, are with you here. But mm. what are you seeing from the team in practice? And is that something that, that can help some of the these close oh, game situations? Sure. Um, and, and I think I said absolutely. And it is yes is the answer to the question. Um, the, the, the main pri and primary difference in that last game was number of takeaways. Um, um, so uh, Wake Forest had three. Um, one of the reasons uh, for the um, um, the pooch the pooch kickoff was to steal a possession back, um, as it appeared that Wake Forest was going to be a very careful and methodical with the football, and so uh, uh, I viewed that as it ending up minus two rather than minus three for, with the intent to take one back. But that was with the 
the clear realization of number of possessions and where the ball is going to, um, where the offenses are going to start with this football is going to matter. And so as you look at the 10 points that Wake Forest scored in the second half, they were scoreless without um, takeaways. So uh, we have a simple saying that hasn't gone all the way into our culture yet, but it's reinforced frequently, and I wish it showed more at this point, is the ball is everything. And at some point, we'll play in a manner that shows that, and that streak will end, and maybe we'll have a streak that will reflect something else. Um, Usually it reflects leadership and coaching, so I haven't been able to get that point clearly across or across deep enough yet for it to show. Jordan Ellis had a nice run on the touchdown in the first score. I know there are only so many carries to be divided among the running backs, but is he a guy you expect going forward, if not this year, but next year to figure more prominently in the offense? Yeah, I think, I think he'll have to. Um, uh, I really like how Albert Reed runs the football, and I really currently like how Smoke is running the football, and I like Daniel Hammond as the return man, and, and Albert is kind of a journeyman contributing whenever he's called and through special teams as the first jersey selector of this year. And so one of the reasons I think he was selected to do that is he's unselfish, he's team first, he's hardworking, and he's really happy for his teammates when they have success. And so uh, his time will come. And it's fun when he gets his chance to have to see him have success because everyone realizes who he is and how hard he works. Bronco, um, what is the difference between uh, you were talking about the phases and things? Your first year at BYU and here is it talent, familiarity with the with the players, personnel, mm -hmm. or losing uh, and having a lack of confidence? Really good question, um, and I've tried not to draw comparisons just um, to keep the focus on this team. Um, but I, I will, I will address it maybe in this way. Um, at BYU, I had the advantage of being an assistant coach for two years prior to being the head coach and seeing two years of losing, and so I had a much clearer. No, I had a very clear idea of where we were starting from and what had to happen. What were the things that absolutely had to be corrected to give us a better chance? And it took at least two games. And then some of those next five to see how deep some of these reference points were and to uncover all the things that truly needed attention. And, and sometimes, um, and I'm fully responsible for it, sometimes the only way to see that is in a game. And sometimes the only way to see it is against this style of opponent. Um, or this situation, I'd love to say I could have predicted, and it's my job to do so. Um, but this has been a process. And so the biggest difference is this team is absolutely more willing and eager than I ever would have expected. Um, if anything, uh, I didn't have or didn't use quite enough time in relation to the two previous years I had at BYU before I became the head coach of seeing the culture and being part of it and knowing what had to change. Um, and so I think. Uh, it's a bigger change effort with less time in relation to learning about um, what the issues really are here. And that's, but it's been nothing the players have done. They have absolutely done everything we've asked them to do in relation to my job is to ask them to do the things that will make the most difference in relation to where they are. And I've learned more what those things are as we've gone. It's somebody that's <clears throat> pretty numbers driven Back-to-back -back years now, Virginia's going to have the one and two leaders in, in, in tackles. Mm. One was on a team that's four and eight, another on a team that's not going to bowl. How do you view tackles? Obviously, there's a lot of tackles out there, but, but how do you view tackles in relation to what Quinn and, and Mike are doing? I, I can present it in relation to what I see since I've been here, and I think that would be fair. Um, Micah and Quinn are excellent football players. Um, would be strong contributors and producers on any team that they played for. Are, they both are consistent, they both are resilient, they both have very strong leadership, and they're both very, very good tacklers. And we're playing them in positions um, that they're able to make plays on both sides of the football, meaning um, the more you are aligned over the ball, you, the more you can make plays right or left. And we did something similar with Erlacher at New Mexico and they both are um, aligned a lot of times right over the ball so they can make plays both ways. They are setting a culture for 
amazing numbers of youthful players around them and really showing them how to play not only Division I football, but how to play really good Division I football from a defensive perspective. Uh, a reference point I might give that might be relevant now, and you can use it as you'd, you'd like, when, when I was able to, when I was uh, hired at the University of New Mexico um, under Rocky Long, we won three games our first year, and that was the first year Erlacher had started. Um, the next year we won four after working like crazy, and the next year we won five. And he led the nation in tackles and a lot of different things. So he was never part of a winning uh, team there as a, uh, as a starter. And what was interesting, though, was when he left, all, all the younger guys that were around him, they then won six, they then won seven, and then they won eight. And I think Quinn and Micah um, are having a very similar influence. And the story isn't written yet, but I, I watch the guys playing for the first time. I watch Matt Terrell. <laughs> And I watch Jordan Mack, um, and I watch um, Eli Handback, and I watch to some extent um, Andrew Brown as a first-time significant contributor. And then I watch Bryce Hall, and I watch Juan Thornhill, and I, I watch where they're looking and who they're looking to. And when people speak, or when I'm when there's film, I point something out and I just kind of see them nod, um, and I see who they go to when they have questions, and it's those two. And um, what they're doing for our program and what they've already have done, um, my guess is is they they might sleep in some of the shade of the trees that are are still growing, and um, I saw that once before in my career, and it might be something similar. I don't know for sure yet, but um, that's the closest comparison I can give.